Hi you guys, I am here to share another week of meals with you. Um, I'm going to try and do things a little differently because some of the things that I make are very repetitive and you will have seen in my other videos. So I'm going to be showing you a couple of the cooked recipes that will be included with this week. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is chicken alfredo with zucchini noodles and broccoli. And then I'm going to be doing sausage and peppers with some onions. And growing up, my mom always used to make sazitz, um, sausage with peppers and onions. And she would cut up potatoes in there. And it was one of my favorite things to eat because the, the oils that come out of the sausage, all that flavor would soak up into the potatoes and just roasting for a couple hours it just all came together and it was like so good and you know you can't have potatoes when you're doing low carb so I've been hearing that you can roast radish radishes and that they are very similar to potatoes so that's what I'm going to incorporate with my sausage and peppers today instead of potatoes and we'll see how it turns out together um, some of the other things I'm making are just going to be egg cups which you've seen before um, we are finding we're I think in our third week of being back to full-on you know really committed low-carb lazy keto and we're at the point where we're just not eating that much we're basically you know kind of intermittent fasting because we're not getting hungry until later in the day and maybe we're having one or two meals a day so i'm just i'm not needing to make as many things which is awesome um so what else some of the other things matt is going to try to keep more things on the truck that don't need to be refrigerated that can be made on hand so um something we've been having lately i just call it pizza quesadilla we take our low carb tortilla put it in a really good nonstick pan and put some mozzarella on there, put pepperoni on there, whatever you want to put inside of it. I don't coat the pan with anything. I just let it sit until the tortilla gets browned and crispy. But I found a really low carb uh, pizza sauce. At least I find it in Myers, which is a local kind of grocery store to the I would want to say the tri-state area so if you're in Michigan I believe they're in Ohio as well you'll be able to look for it there it's called Pastorelli's I have found it at Walmart too but it's really interesting because a serving is six grams of carbs but there are seven grams of fiber in there so it turns out to actually be negligible if that's a thing so, and it tastes really, really good. So anyways, we'll make up that tort, um, pizza quesadilla and then we'll just use some of the sauce to dip it in. It's delicious. And Matt has an electric burner that he's able to use in the truck when he's over the road. So, and he has a nonstick pan. And so he'll be able to just keep um, those ingredients that don't take up much room in his fridge and throw it together when he's ready to eat it. It's a really satisfying type of little meal i'm telling you it's like one of those things that you would order if you went out you know to a bar and we're having a beer and it's like real appetizer like thing if i'm making sense here so i love to find things like that that we can eat that just feel like we're not going without um you know, I love pizza. I grew up, my parents owned a pizzeria for a few years, and I love pizza. I'm Sicilian. I love Italian food. I love things with cheese and bread. And so I've really just been enjoying these pizza quesadillas. And what else? I'm going to be making some of the blueberry muffins, which I've shown in another meal prep video as well. And then I think um, we'll have... Um, celery on hand to you know put cream cheese or a little bit of peanut butter as an extra treat and I think that's about it for this week and then Matt has his meat sticks that we buy from Sam's Club uh, he really likes those to snack on and I'm trying to think yeah sounds like 
about it. So let me get the camera turned around and the first thing I'm going to be doing is the um, low carb chicken alfredo with zucchini noodles and broccoli and let me tell you guys it is so delicious. It is so good. It's a winner for sure. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start getting our sauce going. So I just have a nonstick pan over medium heat and into that I am going to use a half a stick of cream cheese. So four ounces of cream cheese. And we tried this recipe last week and Matt really ended up loving it. He didn't grow up really eating vegetables and so I'm really proud of him since we've been together and he's been experiencing, you know, eating vegetables. He's really getting a taste for them and he really enjoyed this. So there we go with our cream cheese. And then I need to get a cup of heavy whipping cream. to get um, a cup of this is shredded Parmesan and if you didn't have this kind of Parmesan you could definitely use the more powdered kind that we all grew up with and love that's fine it will definitely still work Put that in there and, oh, I need mozzarella. Just a cup of shredded mozzarella. And I like to add, just for a little more flavor, I like to add, this is granulated garlic powder. And it ends up being about, uh, I wanna say a tablespoon. And if you've never had granulated garlic powder, you know, more commonly you're gonna find um, just garlic powder. Granulated garlic is a little different. The granules are actually bigger. It's not powdered. And I feel like the flavor is a lot more concentrated and tasty. So if you've never tried granulated, try it out. And then just some grated black pepper. You really shouldn't need to add any salt to this between because between the Parmesan, the cream cheese, the mozzarella, um, you really should have plenty of salt. So I wouldn't add any at this point. You can add it to taste once you're actually eating the dish. And then here I just have some ground red pepper. And these are from peppers that I dried myself from peppers in my garden. I dehydrated them and then just put them through a electric coffee grinder. And I'm just gonna add a pinch of that. Well, a couple pinches. Cause I like it. And that's it for the sauce. So we're just going to let that come together. And get something to stir it with. And that's that. I have the oven preheating to 375. This is a nine by 13. Um, Pyrex dish. You can use whatever kind of dish you want. And I'm not going to spray it or anything like that. And while our sauce is coming together, I'm going to get our zucchini ready. And these are just two medium zucchini. Um, these are a little mottled. I got them from Aldi. They're not 
perfect. They're definitely fresh. There's nothing wrong with them. Um, they were pretty inexpensive. So I'm not going to use a skin on these, but if they had really beautiful, perfect skin, I would definitely just keep that on. So let me just get this cut up. I'm going to turn the camera a little bit more so you can see what's going on. Okay. And I really just love the way zucchini cooks down and the texture that it turns into to kind of replace the noodles. Um, it's really good. And these days you can find already prepared zoodles in the freezer section. Um, a lot of times you can find it in the fresh vegetable section, kind of by the deli where they are, have already ready to go cleaned celery and broccoli and all that stuff. So if you know, you're trying to save even more time, then definitely just check that out. Nothing wrong with convenience sometimes. my zucchini zoodled I'm not I don't have a spiralizer so they're not going to come out in thin like um, shoelace type of strands but this is kind of funny Matt went to listen to one of those what do you call them like knife demonstrations at Sam's Club and at the end of it you can you get a couple little free gadgets so this is one of the gadgets he ended up getting I had forgotten all about this until last weekend so I pulled it out and I'm like, well, let's see, let's see how this thing works. And it actually works really well. It's kind of fun. So I like to cut the zucchini into just smaller sections. So because this is a medium, I'll just do half. And then you just stick that cork down in until it hits the first spiral. And then you just start, oh, ah. Hold on, let's try that again. I promise you it works. Okay, and then you just start turning and it, you know, that corkscrew is going to start going into the zucchini. And then it just goes around and around and around. And I don't worry if it, see, I just keep going with it. I don't try to make it all stay in one piece. Ooh. See, you guys, I'm so clumsy. Dang. <laughs> and just keep going like that. And that's about it. Pretty cool. I'm just going to put this back here. I'm going to put it right into the Pyrex dish. So let me get the rest of these spiralized, I guess I'll call it, and I'll show you what the next step is. And our sauce has started to bubble, so I'm just going to give that a turn or a stir and turn it down a little bit because I'm not quite ready for you yet. It smells so good. Yum. All right, let's hurry up and get the rest of this zucchini done. So that's what we are going to end up with as far as zucchini and I'm going to get some broccoli and I use approximately um, 
It's probably about, oh, sorry, three cups of broccoli. Good way to get all these veggies in too. Sneak it into some cheese sauce. Cheese makes everything better. And I don't want the leaves that are in there. And I'm just gonna make sure, I just wanna make sure that um, none of these ends have started to brown. You know, this is already pre-washed. See, this one here has a little browning, so. I'm going to clean that off. And then I break the florets up with, with my fingers just to make them into smaller bite sized type of pieces. They'll also wilt down as they cook, so you don't want to make it too small or else they'll just disappear inside the whole dish. Okay, so that's pretty good. I'm just going to get this into my dish. Actually, here's a piece that I don't want in there. Okay, so broccoli and zucchini down. And then the last thing here, I have some chicken that I already cooked. This is just chicken breast that I roasted in a 375 degree oven. I drizzled it with olive oil and sprinkled it with a little salt and pepper and garlic or granulated garlic. You can use chicken thighs, whatever you want. <clears throat> and I just cooked it for and baked it in the oven like that for about a half hour. So I'm just going to get this cut into smaller bite-sized pieces. And you could use this same recipe if you didn't have chicken or you wanted to make it even easier. Um, you can do ground beef with this as well. get my cheese sauce give that another stir cheese sauce is pretty much done so I'm just going to turn it off and make sure that cream cheese is incorporated in there really well oh my gosh I wish you guys could smell this I really wish you could smell that because it smells so good okay Okay, so let's get this last chicken breast cut up. And this, you know, you can use more chicken if you want. Um, I'm really trying to keep our protein in check. So I'm trying to limit the amount of protein from meat in this dish. But of course, if you use chicken thigh, that has more fat, so you wouldn't have to really worry about it as much if you are tracking your macros. Okay. So just get our chicken in there. The oven is ready to go. So at this point, I just take our cheese sauce and you are just going to dump it over the whole thing. Just like that. 
And then I'm gonna try to just mix it up a little bit. Um, once it cooks down, it'll be much easier to kind of mix and bring it all together. And also you are going to get some of the, um, you know, the water is going to come out of the zucchini and the broccoli, and it's going to make this sauce thin out even more. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Look at that, you guys. So good. And this is going to go into the oven for approximately 30 minutes or until, you know, all the veggies have really wilted down in size and you start seeing browning on the top. I like to try and just make sure it's at least pretty well mixed. There's some cheese sauce touching everything in here. Okay. And then I like to top it off with a little more of the grated Parmesan. And that just helps get that nice brown, crunchy top going on. All right, that's it. And I will show you what this looks like when it comes out. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that, you guys. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I'm starting to get it into containers, and I hope you guys can see this. I just want to point, point out, by using that type of spiralizer, I might just have to use my fingers and grab it. So this is how the zucchini cooks down, and it literally looks like a fettuccine noodle. You see that? I feel like it's so cool. It helps to make this seem even more authentic so I just had to show you guys that real quick all right so we're just gonna give this a taste to make sure it came out okay hmm right yeah I'm sure it's delicious so look at that it looks like a noodle it's so cool so noodly <laughs> who knew hmm It's so creamy. The zucchini still holds a little bit of a crunch. The broccoli got tender. The cheese gives it like a, a nice amount of salt. I wouldn't add any more salt to this for my taste. Um, yeah. So definitely give this a try. You will like it. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is make my sausage peppers and faux potatoes with radishes. And I'm going to be using this pan here. This was my mama's lasagna pan. This pan is probably older than me. I am 45 years old. And I remember lasagnas being cooked in the oven or pot roast being cooked in the oven. Um, while we were at church, we would get home from church and there it would be ready to go ready to eat and i miss my mama a lot i lost not to be a downer but i lost my uh mom and dad in 2006 and life has just never been the same since uh, i am a first generation american both of my parents uh, were immigrants from sicily and they were just really proud to be um citizens of this country so anyhow i miss them so much you guys um and this is in dedication to my mama tomorrow would have been her birthday today september 19th my mom's birthday was on september 20th as well as her mama's birthday my nona who has also passed um so this is dedicated to them and this is really simple. These are all the ingredients that we are going to need to do this. 
So I'm just going to drizzle a little bit of olive oil into this pan. We are going to be getting grease from the sausage, so I'm just putting a couple tablespoons in here because I'm going to just coat the peppers and onions and radishes in here with the olive oil. So just set that to the side and set my sausage to the side and I'm going to start working on, I'm going to just slice up the onion and yeah, so <laughs> let me just get that done real quick. Okay, so onions are sliced and now I'm going to work on getting our green pepper going here. And I'm going to just slice them up as well into long strips. Oh look, this one had Cracker Jack surprise inside. Alright, let me get this going. And I have two green peppers. These are decent size. These are, I would say, medium to large. The onions I used were pretty small. That's why I used two of them. So low carb police, don't come after me. Um, yeah. <laughs> You can definitely omit the onion if you don't want those in there. And after looking at this, you guys, I think I'm only going to use one and a half green peppers because they are rather large. Okay, now here's a bag of radishes that I got. Um, radishes, I mean, I've bought them and sliced them up in salad. I do like the, the taste, a little bite of a fresh radish. So I'm really curious to see what they're going to be like after they're cooked. I'm not going to peel them. I am going to cut away at any part that might have a blemish. And I'm going to cut these ends off. And then I will cut them in half. And that's how I'm going to incorporate them into this. So let me get these babies ready to go into this sausage bath over here. Okay, so I'm actually going to leave these three out. I'm going to reserve these to slice up and use in some salads later in the week. Yep, I made that executive decision. So this is what we're working with here. I am going to put some, I have some uh, Himalayan pink salt here. So I am going to just sprinkle some of that on. And then, of course, some cracked black pepper. Let's get this. I'm using, this is um, hot Italian sausage. You could use whatever kind of sausage. You can use mild sweet Italian sausage. You can use bratwurst. You can use kibasa. Whatever type of sausage you like. Me, I am a fan of sausage. Oh, actually, now before I put that in, I want to get this tossed around. Now definitely if you want to save even more carbs, you can use no onion. Um, I've said this before, you know, we are 
we've really done really well omitting um, really bad carbs out of our diet and onion I know it has carbs but it's a vegetable it's delicious and I'm going to eat it and not feel guilty about it <laughs> And then I'm just going to lay my sausage down on top. I like to let them cook whole. That way they don't get completely dried out. And I know this looks like a lot of veggie, but that's all going to wilt down. And then once it's cooked and these are browned and um, kind of crispy on the outside from the oven, then I'll cut them into smaller sections. So this is also going to go into a 375 degree onion or oven and it's probably going to be in there for a good hour, maybe hour. Well, probably I'll probably actually lower it down to 325 after a half hour or so and let it kind of cook slowly. So I'll let you know how long this ended up cooking because the radishes are new to me. I don't really know how long those are going to take. So we shall see. I'll let you know. All right, you guys. So our sausage and peppers have come out of the oven. And as you can see, all that onion and all that green pepper really cooks down. And here are the radishes. They got really tender. They look like red potatoes in here. So Matt and I are going to turn the camera around and we're going to give this a taste. This is our first time trying radishes in this way. All right, so here is one of the radishes. I want to try it on its own before I take a bite of everything together. You ready? Sure. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. So it really surprisingly has the texture of a baked red potato in here. It's taken on some of the flavor from the sausage like I was hoping it would and Although you can taste it's not a potato, it's not unpleasant. Um, I don't know if I made this dish, if I made sausage and peppers again, I don't know if I would have to have the radishes in there because at the end of the day, it doesn't replace the potato for me. No. It's its own thing. But it's not unpleasant. So if there's a nutritional aspect of this, of why to include more radishes, I would definitely include them in this way, cooking them this way. So now you want to try like a bite with sausage and everything together. And as you can see, our sausages have gotten nice and browned. I'm gonna try and find another small one here. So here's everything together. Mm. It's really good. That would be a good meal. I like how they all kind of go together. Mm -hmm. Green pepper, radish, and sausage, right? Mm -hmm. What kind of sausage? This sausage that I use is from BJ's Wholesale. It's a hot sausage and it's the Marketplace brand. I absolutely love, love, love. The sausage, I love the texture of it. So if you have a BJ's Wholesale near you, try out the Marketplace Italian sausage. It comes in mild or sweet or the hot. But I would say I'd give this a thumbs up. And I'm going to look up more facts about radishes. And it may become something we include more often. I really hope you guys like seeing some of the things that we eat for maintaining our low-carb lifestyle. And I think that's a wrap. I'm going to get everything else together. Like I said, I'm not going to show you every detail because 
we do repeat a lot of things so I don't want to keep repeating the same thing but I am going to try to bring you one or two new things that we try out every week so if you have not done so yet please hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos hit that notification bell give me a like comment down below I love hearing from you guys and until next time stay safe and be blessed Bye. Bye.